Hey folks, this is Matt Rainwater, and today we're going to be reading, I'm just looking at the episode that I put, what I wrote down, uh, episode 43 of Trailer Park Warlock. Um, lots of Plant 2. I hope you like Plant 2. <laughs> like I said last time, um, after the last episode, Daywalker Magic, was when I really started to get fascinated with Plant 2 as a character, so we see him for a little bit. We're going to get to know him more, get to know what's going on with his stuff. <laughs> That's the best way that I can put it. Um, so anyway, here we go, if you're all ready. Flap, flap. Flap, flap. So this is Hampton's... Um, demonic form carrying Plant 2 in this little this cozy little chamber. Flap, flap. He's writing something. Flap, flap. I'm looking very pensive. Flap, flap, flap. Death Becomes Life. By the way, this title is... A very obtuse reference that only myself and a couple of my friends get, but I felt like it ended up working really well in this uh, episode and what it pertains to within this episode. This is how you make. <laughs> this is how you utilize inside jokes to become major lore in your story. <laughs> All right. Uh, other, just uh, one one more thing I want to bring up. So this is supposed to be an Abyssian church. This is where um, we're going to find out that Revenstone um, does her church work out. I, don't, I, I, didn't, I don't know what other word to use. You'll see in just a second. But anyway, um, I took basically an actual place in Baton Rouge and just kind of converted it. Converted it into vampire church. So I just wanted to point that out. It was... Um, it's a Presbyterian church in downtown Baton Rouge, as far as I remember. Anyway, let's get going. As you all know, Brother Adam has endured the brand for three month for three moons. And tonight he shall receive transfiguration. But first, Adam, I must ask you, do you reject the day and its people? Yes, Madam Revenstone. I'm glad to hear that. Do you accept the laws of first hatred, denying the solar will for that of the abyss? Yes, madam. Then accept this gift of daywalker blood and feed from it. And then he uh, drinks the blood. But this does not taste like blood at all. Was it not sweet like the grape of the vine? Yes. This is only the beginning of transfiguration. Now climb the stairs. And make your final preparations in this form before you speak with the abyss. Before you walk, you must fall, Brother Adam. Ask the dark your deepest desire. No matter the depths of your depravity, it will answer back. This reminds me when I took the plunge back in college. How old were you when you took Transfiguration, dear? Remember that the day passes, Brother Adam. But the dark lies eternal. Looks down into the well. Now, take your fall. I was five on my transfiguration. We just had a broken old tube slide back then. Oh. How things change. And then he falls into the well. Thump. And point two shows up. Robinson sees Plant 2. Ahem. Brother Adam? Madam Revenstone? Hello? Brother Adam, has the Abyss spoken with you? Yes? I think so. It's very cold in here. That cold is the embrace of your new will, your lowest will, the will of death eternal. But death becomes life, brother. Rise from your grave. This is an Altered Beast reference, by the way. <laughs> For any of y'all who have played that old-ass Sega game. <laughs> uh, 
and then brother Adam uh, by the way he's got that ill wind thing right death becomes life brother Adam is transfigured praise be praise be praise be glad to see you survive transfiguration Adam thank you sir a herring night to you madam and also to you I'll get you some scotch for when your fangs come in, all right? We, oui. I think a harrowing night awaits all of us, no? Pawn two. An invitation for you, madame. I pray you will intend. Bring your wages and we will settle all debts together. Goodbye for now. Jessica is looking pissed off. <laughs> And I do love this smug face that Pontu has at the end of the episode. To be continued. Uh, so some thoughts. Um, yeah, so the point of this whole episode was basically to give more content, more cultural context to feeders, right? And to basically further establish this idea that was put forth a couple episodes back when Daryl was at the gas station talking to uh, the clerk or the uh, attendant, I don't know what other you, uh, cashier about, um, about feeder culture. Right. So like here is, I figured this up, ep this episode would be a good opportunity to see firsthand how feeders live their lives, what their religious life is like, basically. Uh, because as we go on, and I, I feel like it becomes, it starts to become pretty obvious at this point, at this episode, that the whole feeder thing is really kind of, kind of an illusion, and it's largely one created as a cult, basically, which Revenstone is the head of. And so now we get kind of an idea of like what it is that Plant Two is uh yeah i guess fighting against or in opposition to um because pontu's character basically is he's a feeder he knows that but he's also as a person not interested in following any particular path except for his own and as such that puts him in uh this that puts him in tension basically, with Revenstone, who is trying to command everybody, right? He's trying to be the boss of everybody. Um, so, of course, we are going to elaborate more on that as we go on in the story. And uh, this is also, I guess, why Pontu becomes, for a while, like my favorite character, because, especially at the time that I was writing this, I just had sort of a... I had this really fascinating, a really big fascination with like this kind of steadfast, re rebellious archetype or whatever. And while Pontu does not start, like he doesn't start that way at all. He starts right, like when he still has his curse. He's a drunk. He's depressed. He's depraved, right? And we get to see him kind of go through this. We get to see him get his groove back, <laughs> basically, <laughs> which I feel like is what. Um, if there was really a name for this arc, <laughs> how Jacques Pontu got his groove back. Anyway, um, we will talk again soon. But until then, um, on Twitter, you can follow me on uh, at Matt J. Rainwater. On Instagram, it's at Matthew Rainwater. Patreon.com. Uh, on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Matt J. Rainwater. Um, anyway, I hope you are enjoying these videos. And if you do, please give it a like and um subscribe to my channel i plan on doing more stuff over time but right now this is my main focus on on my youtube channel and uh anyway until next time um hope you're having a good day and we will talk again soon all right bye